Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony, and welcome to another edition of Being a Sports Talk. So I'm completely jumping off of the band's, uh, Browns bandwagon. I know that they have a e- easing of schedule coming up in like three weeks, and they're gonna be eight and eight, and they're gonna be great. But I, they're not making the playoffs. They're just not. Uh, they're not. This is not like the Cowboys from last year, where all of a sudden they go on a magical run. Who are they gonna get? Who are they gonna get that's gonna solve all their problems? They don't have any draft picks. They don't have any other things like that. And they, they don't have any assets where it's just like, oh yeah, 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 we, we can see the future. No, no, they're not, they're not gonna be good. And they gave up so many picks, and Freddie Kitchens is gonna be a one and done coach, in my opinion. Now, here's where the Browns went wrong. And I'll rip on the Browns a little bit more later because um, I just realized I got into this point and I wanna continue at this point. But number one, they have Ben McAdoo as a coach. Now, I know that their coach is Freddie Kitchens, but no, he's Ben McAdoo. Had one year of success, you know, the it looks like your quarterback is doing great with them. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait, yeah, he doesn't have any head coaching experience. It may work for a little bit. Ben McAdoo had that one season. But, um, yeah, the, the whole, everyone just completely buys out of it. You also have a bad offensive line. You know, the you, you have a horrible offensive line, and it doesn't block. Your quarterback only has two, three seconds, and on top of that, your quarterback is unathletic. He can't get out of plays. He has some, you know, movability in the pocket like every quarterback does, but it's nothing special. He can't. He doesn't have breakaway speed. He's not gonna. You're not going to design run plays for him. And that's the number three point. The number four point is that you traded away a bunch of assets. You traded for a bunch of players, too, and you pay them a lot of money. You have an amazing defensive end. You have an amazing corner. You have uh, some amazing pieces that you've drafted too. That uh, the, some of them are injured and some of them aren't panning out, out as well. But you have some defensive pieces that you're paying a bunch of money to, and you ended up getting rid of a lot of players that were the core foundations of your team, and you didn't even notice. Now, what does this sound like to you? Oh, it sounds like the 2017 New York Giants. The 2017 New York Giants that went three and 13. And they ended up drafting number two overall and drafting a running back in Saquon Barkley. Now, the Browns are not, this, and not in this position. They have their franchise quarterback in Baker Mayfield, so at least they have that down. The Giants at this point did not have the franchise quarterback. But, you know, uh, the, the Browns are looking silly now. Look at their offensive line. Look at their offensive line. It's, it's in shambles. They're giving Baker Mayfield no time to, you know, throw the ball. And this, this is just, it's going to be continuing to be th- pathetic. The, the, their franchise is not good. They're not a smart front office. I don't trust them for future decisions to make them good. You have Odell throwing passes like they did with the Giants. You have Odell making run plays, and nothing's working. You got three points against the 49ers. Three points. Three points in a primetime game, and Nick Bosa finally had his revenge on Baker Mayfield by planting the flag in the middle of the field. And this shows that you cannot have people that are aiming to get you. You know, Tom Brady, everyone has mutual respect. People want to, you know, beat Tom Brady, but people don't want to hurt Tom Brady. People have mutual respect for him because he's such a great player. People want to hurt Baker Mayfield. People hate Baker Mayfield. Nick Bosa hates Baker Mayfield. You have a bunch of players, uh, a bunch of teams that circle their the game on the calendar because they've done a lot of talking and not a lot of winning. They went 7 8 and 1 last year and now they're starting off 2 and 3. So Baker Mayfield is probably under 500 for his career. Mostly, yeah, he definitely is. And if you look at his stats, they're not much better than Daniel Jones. The Giants have uh, made Daniel Jones and they set him up for success. You know, we got rid of Odell and we brought in an offensive lineman. We brought in we brought in three defensive players from Odell. We got in Golden Tate who's decent. We'll see how he develops throughout the year. I mean, it was only his first game of the year. I don't think Pat Sherman wanted to, him to include him in the playbook because it was his first game and you don't know how in shape he's going to be in and uh, different things like that. But uh, the Giants had have had some unlucky breaks with injuries, which is Giants have had some unlucky breaks with injuries, which are included in the ebbs and flows of football. I mean, every team gets injured about how you bounce back from them, and the Browns aren't able to. I do believe a real question has to be asked: Do you would you rather Baker Mayfield or Daniel Jones? So if you look at their 40 times, Daniel Jones ran a little bit of faster for 40 time. Why am I bringing this up? Is because I think Daniel Jones has more tools in his belt. Baker Mayfield is a little more limited now with limited quarterbacks and with stud quarterbacks like Carson Wentz, Matthew Stafford, who feel like they have all the tools in their belt. You know, you have pluses and minuses. Remember with Carson Wentz, Nick Foles had a more simple playbook, but Carson Wentz had the higher ceiling. So that that sort of thing. I think Daniel Jones is more well-versed with um, with coverages, with matchups, with everything like that. And I think that they'll make him play better when, when coming into the future. I, I think that Baker is going to take a 
a while for him to learn, especially since he doesn't have uh, great coaches. And yeah, he hasn't really been put in the best situation like Daniel Jones has. Daniel Jones has been put in with a good enough offensive line. You know, we it feels like the Giants are getting a bunch of just old offensive linemen, which I might make a topic for a different video. Like, what do we do with Nate Soldier uh, and stuff like that? But uh, for now, let's just talk about like Baker Mayfield. He's not being put in a position to succeed. He has a lot of weapons, but what like you can't, you're not able to use the weapons if they're not getting open. Uh, I think that Daniel Jones, he's gotten pressured the most actually out of any quarterback since week three. So he's not really having a lot of time. He's stepping back, he's dropping back, and he uses his height, another feature that he has because he doesn't have he doesn't have a lot of time. Players like Tom Brady, they're they're smart. They know where to go with the ball. Now with Daniel Jones, he's you know he's gonna make mistakes, and Tom Brady makes mistakes too. He made a mistake against the Bills where he's tossed to a, a wide open defender. Like what are you doing? Like he was expecting he's got to be there and it wasn't like sometimes those plays are like oh what what did his brain just like malfunction for a second but you know with Baker Mayfield it's harder for him because he's not as fast he's not as tall Dan Jones is faster and taller and they can make plays that will uh will keep the pass rush even at odds you you know you'll have you have play action passes or design runs that make the defense you know Maybe respect you a little bit more. Maybe respect the run a little bit more and change a little, change some matchups. But um, yeah, I think that right now for the the AFC, if I had to pick a favorite, it would honestly have to be the Patriots. I said the Texans are only gonna have six wins. You know, they they made that move with getting two off, uh, getting an offensive lineman, getting a wide receiver to help Deshaun Watson to give him more time. And to, you know, as a wide receiver, they're they're banking on their really short-term future. And they're just hoping in the next two years that they'll be able to compete. They play, actually, the Patriots, which is going to be uh, an important game for seeding and for just a, the division in general. I think the Houston Texans have to be named up there. Obviously, you can't rule out the Chiefs anymore. I mean, they're September. They always do great in September. And then when it comes to October, it's like, oh, yeah, they're still, they have flaws. But last year, they end up coming back in the playoffs. They're going to get healthy. They're going to get Tyreek Hill back. I think they're going to get their left tackle back. Uh, it's all going to be fine. Uh, it's not time to sell your Kansas City Chief stock. I would, I would buy it because right now they're, oh, like every team one week is going to look pathetic. You know, no, no team is going to go 16-0. and 0 And the, the, the three teams like stocks. You know, the Patriots are going to lose one of these games against the Eagles, the Cowboys, where they're going to look absolutely putrid and be like, oh, wait, the Cowboys are great, and then people are going to buy their stock. You know, week to week, the NFL narratives change. All of a sudden, Minnesota, oh, my God, they beat up on a bad defense. That's why you got to be, you know, you got to keep note of all these things. Uh, so I, I, you have to keep New England as your favorite, but their offensive line is so weak, and a team like you know, the Kansas City Chiefs team with their defensive front, the Colts, maybe even the Oakland Raiders with their defensive front. Well, actually, no, it's not that good. But, uh, you know, a team like the Bills with their defensive front, they can make the Patriots look silly and they can throw them off. And we know when the Patriots are off, sometimes you knock them out and it's like, oh, shit, wait, what happened? Like, we're not used to losing. What do we do now? We're so used to playing ahead and winning by so many points. What do we do? And, uh, yeah, we can just spiral off and talk about this conversation forever. But, again, number one Patriots. I still think the number two team should be the Chiefs. Uh, I don't think that you should really be underselling their style. I think that the Ravens are the team that you should be like, oh, yeah, Lamar Jackson can make those throws. Yeah, it's probably like a little bit of a flash in the pan thing. They played Miami and uh, the Cardinals, the two worst pass defenses in the league, pretty much. Well, two worst defenses, at least. You know, Lamar Jackson has been throwing some dimes, but that doesn't really matter. And, um... Yeah, I think you have to buy some Houston Texans stock. Even though I said they won't play great, by default, they're going all in this year. That, that's why I've really been taking, reversing my opinion about the Houston Texans. Because, you know, you have to protect Deshaun Watson. And there's there going to be a cost to it. It's a high cost. But in the long run, it's going to be good. The Bills, I think that they're going to be limited with Josh Allen. I just think Josh Allen, no matter what, is going to make a dumb play. You can't trust it. You have to trust. Uh, I trust the Bills with good management and stuff. But... Uh, I, I'm I'm shaky on the Bills, but yeah, and then you have to also look at Oakland. They you know they have a young defense. I think it's a little bit too young, and you know you have too much a little bit too much turmoil. I think they're going to be a team where it's like they're going to compete at the end of the year, and they're going to be like, oh yeah, they they went eight and eight, but it was you know it's a successful season. We're looking forward to next year. Um, and you have to give them kudos too. And I feel like I'm missing one team. Not really. I mean, there there are not really that many teams that are overly exciting this year that are like, oh, yeah, this team can be great. You know, each team has uh, weaknesses, has been exposed, even the Patriots. There's a formula out for any everybody, 
and you just got to do your job each and every given week. Um, so yeah, I think that the Ravens take the NFC North. The Bills take, I mean, the Bills probably take a wild card. The Patriots win the AFC East, and then um, what? The AFC South probably goes to the Texans. And, um, yeah, because I don't really trust any of the quarterbacks, any of the rest of the quarterbacks in that division. And then, finally, the AFC West probably just goes to the Chiefs. Like, you, the, it's simple. They're going to be the, the top teams left. You you only win who you're playing against. That doesn't really apply. I'm kind of uh, looping in my, my thoughts. But I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, yeah, um, make sure to give it a like rating right down there. Please comment. And I, I try to add to the conversation. I don't like saying what everyone else is saying. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and bye.